All right, moving right along to one of the most important sections of this entire video lecture series, and that's ST segment elevation. You know, the, this idea of correlating uh, the ST segment to the myocardial infarction and how that really works. And the honest truth about this is that it's theorized and we actually don't know. There are theories that they have come up with to sort of, you know, correlate these two aspects of phenomenon, but you know, they, they, they don't really work together. And when I look, when I did research on this, there were some papers on it. There were some videos that were just God awful that, that made me want to blow my fucking brains out. Uh, but, but because they were just too confusing and they didn't, it just didn't make sense. The, when we've, if you go back into these videos and follow ions, uh, what they were proposing doesn't make sense, and there's a reason it's theorized right now. So let, let's break down these theories. So we have a piece of artery, like the left anterior descending right here, that's sort of hitting this lateral wall, or this, and and it's blocking and it's occluding and it's causing cellular damage to happen right here, right? Now, there's something important about this cellular damage that happens, right, that we need to keep in mind, and that when we have cellular damage in this anaerobic state, we are getting oxygenation down there, we are getting perfusion down there, what happens? We have protein expulsion, we have ion leakage, and the cell becomes electrically inert. So it's really hard to sort of capture the photos that we were capturing earlier. And that's why we see these changes. We're sort of looking at, at this cell wall or at this myocardial wall and saying, hey, you know, something's not right. We have ions that are moving from place to place. We're seeing reciprocal changes in other leads. We're, we're seeing things that don't really match up to the, to the norm of everything else. So what we're going to start out is with the Q wave, uh, which is really cool to sort of interpret. Now, I took these images straight out of Dale Dubin's book on EKGs and just sort of uploaded them to these because that's a, a great text and I, I recommend it to anybody. Dale Dubin, Rapid Interpretation of EKGs. Uh, it gives the down and dirty, you know, no messing around that the pre-hospital profession needs. So we're looking at this, these left ventricles, right? This, this sag sagittal section of this left ventricle, here's the top view of it. And we're looking at the, the uh, vectors of depolarization, right? The vectors of depolarization that are happening with inside the cell. And we're trying to take a picture of it. Now, we already mentioned that it is uh, electrochemically inert when these cells die, right? So our picture, our, our, our camera, can't really take a picture of this cell wall. So what we are actually looking at is a posterior view. And this is a, the left ventricle again, and we're sort of, you know, looking straight through that to the other side. This is one of the theories that happens. And, and when we notice these changes uh, with inside EKG myocardial infarction. But the two main theories that we want to look at are, are, are these two theories, the diastolic theory and the systolic theory. Now, the diastolic theory happens at rest, at, at, at contraction, uh, after contraction uh, of the uh, you know, ventricles when nothing is really firing, we notice that these, remember those cells that we talked about before, they become leaky, they become damaged. And our main intracellular cation, which is uh, potassium, begins to leak outwards. And that creates less of a dipole. It creates less of a chemical gradient shift. So that's how it becomes uh, electrically inert. And the EKG can't really pick that up that well. So what it does is it lowers, because of this uh, electrical chemical gradients becoming lower and we're not really having you know, that, that, that gradient that we're so used to, that the EKG is used to, the isoelectric line moves downwards. So there's not, they're saying that it's not really that the ST segment is moving upwards, but the isoelectric line is moving downwards because we don't have that, that, uh, that millivolt exchange because we are moving these ions 
outwards and that's creating less of a dipole, less of a gradient. So the EKG machine cannot pick that up. So what it does is it moves this, this isoelectric line. Remember these, those contractions that we were having, those isoelectric lines where it's at rest right now, the TP segment, the end of the T to the P segment, the TP segment in between beats moves that downwards. And when that gets moved downwards, everything relative to that gets moved upwards. So that's how they're correlating uh, the, the, diastolic, um, the diastolic theory for uh, ST segment elevation. Now, one that's even weirder is the systolic theory. So when we have contractions, well, it's not weirder, it's just sort of easier to understand, I, I think, uh, because when we have you know, normal cell contraction, uh, myocardial contraction, we have these cells that, you know, they're, they're happy. They're happy-go-lucky. They have potassium on the inside, and they're repolarizing just fine because remember when we're looking at S the ST segment and the T segment in particular, we're looking at repolarization of the myocardial cells. And when we have that damage start to have in that anaerobic state, potassium starts going everywhere and these cells are having a harder time repolarizing. So they're stating that, you know, it's, it's taking more energy and more effort and more of a gradient and they're having to work with more of a gradient uh, with these potassium ions on the extracellular, uh, on the extracellular uh, section of the cell. So they're having to move it uh, inwards with more energy. And that's why there's, that's why there's this uh, uh, ST segment elevation is because we have potassium leaking into the extracellular cavity and they're having to take a longer time to repolarize and having to utilize more millivolts to uh, reach that potential and to get back to baseline. So that's that's the systolic theory of, of repolarization after contraction of the ventricles. And and the, the important thing to take away from this is that you know there's no clear cut answer but there are positive correlations with the set associations that we have ingrained with us that we have been practicing for years now decades even is that there are correlations between st segment elevation and myocardial uh, ischemia and infarction and remember that there are levels of these there are levels of uh, you know he's slightly the, the myocardium is slightly ischemic to uh, it's actually injured to there's actual um, uh, long-lasting and permanent damage. So there are cor set correlations that we have set within us and ingrained within us that we really need to maintain, and that is ST segment elevation uh, and not J-point elevation, uh, not benign J-point elevation or hyper-repolarization, but ST segment elevation does correlate with a, uh, inf a you know, with injury and infarct with inside the myocardium. So you need to be sure and, and understand that even though there, there are theories, we still have correlation between these two. And, and that's really the point that I wanted to make. So remember that when we look at ST segment elevation, we need to have a couple things. We need to have it in contiguous leads, more than one contiguous lead. And a contiguous lead is like saying septal and anterior or reciprocal changes in that we're looking at different sides of the myocardium. Like say if we're looking at the lateral aspect of the myocardium, then we would see reciprocal changes in T wave ischemia on the, uh, on the inferior aspect of the heart. So there are many, many different things that correlate uh, or excuse me, that associate with ST segment elevation and, and small little minute changes like T wave inversion, or uh, is there more than one contiguous lead that this that the ST segment elevation is is a part of? And remember that we we're looking for one millimeter changes. We have to have at least one millimeter change in the box from the isoelectric line to the ST segment elevation. So uh, with that, I'm going to say, I cannot wait to see you guys in lab. We are gonna have an extraordinarily fun day. Uh, you're gonna be, uh, we have a little surprise with, with stuff that you're gonna be able to take home, but mostly it's gonna be ingraining within you repetition of identifying the certain aspects of the muscle wall and the ST segment elevation that correlates with which artery. 
and how to treat it. So I will see you guys in lab. If you guys have any questions, please be sure to, to uh, get a hold of me at paramediccharlie, all one word, with an L-I-E, at yahoo.com. And uh, thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.